Genesis 32, 26 says, and he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Sometimes we may think that we shouldn't ask to be blessed. But I love the story here of Jacob because he literally struggles with the Lord saying, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And there's so many stories in the Bible that talk about people fighting for something with God. Either they're fighting for healing, either they're fighting for his attention, even they're fighting for just the touch of his garment or they're fight, fight, fighting or they're fighting for a blessing. And I love that here because it shows that sometimes there is a struggle. And I, it's interesting because even a couple, I forget when it was, maybe two years ago or something like that, we were even writing a song. It's called Incessant Love. And, and we wrote this song about the woman with the issue of blood and how she just fought her way through all the people just to touch the hem of his garment. And I love stories when you think about someone fighting for something. Have you seen a movie where someone's fighting for something and it's like the whole movie, they're fighting and fighting and fighting and they finally get it. Has anyone seen a movie like that? If you watch a Nicholas Sparks movie, you've probably seen a movie that's like that. And it always reminds me of maybe a relationship when it's like you first start liking someone and you just fight so hard for their attention or you fight so hard for the seat that's sitting right next to them and it's like you secretly be like oh don't don't sit there I want to sit there like oh I know why you want to sit there now right but I think about even in the natural how sometimes we fight for something and it's it feels so rewarding maybe you're playing a game of volleyball or a friendly game of soccer whatever it is and you're fighting for winning or you're fighting for that win and then when you win it feels so good to have fought for something and we need to have that same fight in us that Jacob had when he was fighting for that blessing with the Lord. We need to have that same fight in us that's fighting for that relationship with God or that's fighting for the blessing of the Lord or fighting for whatever it is we need in our life, whether it be healing or whether it be peace or rest, whatever it is you're going through. We have to have that same fight in us that fights for something in our relationship with God. It's like that energy inside of us. And we, I was thinking about something and thinking about the story of Jacob. And sometimes, you know, when you're grown up and maybe you're at like a friend's house and your parents teach you like, well, don't ask them. Just wait till they offer it to you, right? But as we get older and we start walking our relationship with God, sometimes we keep that same mentality. Well, if God wanted to give me peace, he would give it to me. Or if God wanted to give me rest, he would give it to me. Or if God wanted to bless me, he would bless me. But I'm always, again, reminded back to the story of Jacob where he fought with him and the Lord said, let me go. And he said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And that, again, is that same fight that we need to have in us and understand that God does want to bless us as well. But there's a fight that needs to happen that we say to God and we wrestle with him and say, God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And in Genesis 32, 27 through 28. Okay, I'm glad it's not going up there. Okay, because I messed up. <laughs> it says 27 to 28, 27. Genesis 32, 27 to 27. Eight, it says, so he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. I have over this, he wants to bless you. He fought with the Lord so much that the Lord finally gave in and said, I'm going to bless you. He even gave him a new name. And he said, because you have fought for this blessing, it says, because you have fought and prevailed, I will change your name. Because you fought for this blessing and prevailed, I will bless you. And I love that. Because who out there wants a blessing from the Lord? Who out there is wondering and has been kind of wondering, God, why haven't you given me peace? Or God, why haven't you given me rest? Or God, why do I not have this hope inside of me? Has anyone wondered why someone may have something and you don't have it? And here tonight, I'm telling you, fight for it because God wants to bless you, but it's time to start fighting for that blessing because we have to understand First of all, that God wants to bless us. But second of all, that God has great things planned for each and every one of our lives. 
Sometimes we have to go through unfortunate situations. My favorite saying is crap situations. Those are the kind of situations that I like to refer to as ones that we would rather not go through, but it seems like, well, I'm just going to have to go through this situation because that's what God needs me to go through, right? So sometimes we have to realize that we have to go through these crap situations. And when we go through these questions or these situations, we start questioning, well, does God really want to bless me? Or does God really want me to get through on the other side? Does God really have a great plan for me? Because again, who's went through a tough situation? In the middle of those situations, sometimes it doesn't seem like there's hope on the other side. And through the situation, it seems to be that you could start getting discouraged maybe a little bit. But we have to always keep in mind that God wants to bless us. On the other side, there is a blessing, but we have to fight through that situation. I love there's a verse in the Bible says, he will pour out for you such a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. Isn't that awesome to know that God wants to bless you so much? And I always refer to Christmas morning because that's something that in my family that was always just such a great day. I loved, we had this tradition of we never believed in Santa. My parents were like, if I'm going to buy all you these presents, I want you to know that I spent my time picking out these presents and I spent money on these presents. So we never believed in Santa, but all the presents would just get all under the tree after we went to sleep. So then we would wake up in the morning at whatever time, whoever woke up the earliest, we'd wake each other up and we would go and sit at the top of the stairs. My parents would get out their old VHS recorders and they would go, all right, one, two, three. And we would run down the stairs and I just remember seeing, and when you're young, there could be like 10 presents under the tree, but how many of you know it feels like your whole room is like top to bottom. And then I look back at pictures and I'm like, I mean, it was a great Christmas, but when you're small, you look at all these presents and it's just like, my world is just the best thing ever because Christmas just happened, right? I like to think of God's blessings like that because when it says here, he wants to pour out for you such a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. I just imagine it like Christmas morning when God says, I want to bless you. And it's just like, oh my gosh, there's just so many blessings that God has for me. And he has those same blessings for each and every one of you. But I want you to understand that there is this struggle. There is this fight that we may have to go through. So I love one part of this verse right here. It says, the Lord says to Jacob, you have struggled with God and with men. I love that Pastor Lauren has been talking a lot about marriage. He's been talking a lot about relationships with people. And he's been talking a lot about how those natural relationships also relate to God and the church and also can mirror your relationships with people is your relationship with God. And he's been talking so much about this, but he's also been talking about love and the type of love that we have for God and the type of love that we have for people and finding that true love that God has planned for us. So If we want to be blessed, there's a struggle, right? But it's not just with God. There's also a struggle with people. Because it says here to Jacob, you struggled with God and with man and prevailed. Isn't that an amazing concept? Because sometimes in our relationships, in our walk, our Christian walk, we want to think of it as just me and God. God and me, me and God, no one else is going to get in my way. But we have to realize when we have that relationship with God, we have a relationship with people. You can't have a relationship with God and not have a relationship with the people around you. In Genesis 29, 21 through 25, it says, Then Jacob said to Laban, Give my... Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife for my days seven years are fulfilled that I may go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, it's supposed to be Rachel, he took Leah his daughter and brought her to Jacob. And he went into her and Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that behold, it was Leah And he said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? So God says to Jacob, you have struggled with God and you have struggled with men 
and have prevailed. Can you imagine working seven years to marry someone? This day and age, you would just give up and be like, there's someone else. I'll just go find someone else. I ain't working seven years for that person. They're not that great. And I love how Jacob conveniently realizes it in the morning. Has anyone else ever thought that? Or is it just me? Oh, he doesn't know that it's Rachel. He just sleeps with her and then wakes up, or that it's not Rachel. He just sleeps with her and wakes up. What? You are not who I work seven. If you're going to work seven years for someone, like, you should know who that person is, right? I was thinking about that. I forget who I was talking to the other day, but I was like, was it you guys? I'm like, I mean, my husband looks a lot like his brother, like a lot, but you would know, like, you would know, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so (laughs) Jacob here struggled because remember going back a couple chapters, going forward to back, Jacob, he was struggling with God and he says, and you have struggled with God and with man. So we're always going to have to realize that we're always going to have run-ins with crazy people. We're always going to have run-ins with people who we may not agree with. We're always going to have run-ins with someone who's going to think one thing and we think the other and we're not going to see eye to eye. You maybe have a relationship with someone and you guys just aren't really the same so it doesn't work out that great. I always like to think about, or you know what I always think is people think, well, if we're opposites, we would never get along. We have to have something in common, right? So I have this person in my life. He's my dad. And I am, no joke, I am a lot like him. Very weird, but I'm a lot like my dad. The crazy thing is, is we both think we're always right. I just always am right. You know what I'm saying? So you get two (laughs) people. I'm not always right, but in my mind I am. So you get two people who are very similar. That is a crazy combination as well. Let me tell you what. Always from growing up, my dad and I, I mean, he's a great guy. We get along so well. But man, we go at it because we both are right. And it's just the craziest thing because we could be like, I could say two plus two is four. And he'd be like, it's not. You know what I mean? It's just that I love you, Dad, in case you're watching this. But how many of you know that whether it's someone that we are not like at all or it's someone that we're like, relationships can be crazy at some times. Some people can rub you the wrong way. You could be so in love with someone yet be so annoyed with them at the same time. And I always am forgetting who I'm, oh, I know who it was. I don't need to say But this person said, they were just like, you know what, I love my husband, right? But sometimes I'm just like, I just don't like you right now. And it's crazy how people are people and no one is exactly like you. And if the world was exactly like me, I would be annoyed because I would be annoyed with me too. But all that to say is people are people. Sometimes relationships are a little rocky and sometimes we're not always going to get along with people. People can be mean, people can be jealous, people can be hateful, people could be slanderers, people could be gossipers, all these different things. Has anyone ever had someone who hurt them? Has anyone ever had someone hurt them with their actions? Has anyone ever had someone hurt them with their words? How many of you know that just When dealing with people, sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes it's not fun. But I am here to tell you that people are a part of God's plan. And if you want the blessing of the Lord, and if you want a relationship with God, you have to have a relationship with people. And you have to learn to, just like God, when you struggle with God and you prevail, the same thing has to happen in our relationships with people. We will struggle with people, but we have to prevail. We have to learn something from that situation. Again, people aren't always easy to work with, but if we want everything that God has for us, we have to learn to work with people. And what I want to tell you is we want a blessing. If you want a blessing, it may come with a cost. Sometimes blessings come with a cost. And in Genesis 32, 24 to 25, I have over this blessings, blessing, may come with a cost. I'm going to take my jacket off. Is anyone else hot? 
I turned the air down like to cool before I started speaking, but for some odd reason, it's just not blowing. Okay. Genesis 32, 24 to 25 says, then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And on in the chapter, if you remember from what I was reading at the beginning, it says he walked away with a limp. So Sometimes we want a blessing, but we don't want that struggle. Sometimes we want the blessing, but we don't want a cost attached to something that we have to work for. Everything in life, in some way or another, is going to come at a cost. Even things if you're thinking you have to go to school. Maybe you have to pay for school. You want to go to school, you have to buy gas to get your car to school. You want something, you have to save for it to buy it. There's always some sort of cost attached to things that we have in life. So Jacob here wrestled with the Lord and in the midst of the situation, he threw his hip socket out. That's a very interesting thing because I've never, I don't know anyone personally who's been wrestling spiritually with the Lord and their hip has went out of socket. I don't know if anyone else has known anyone. So Jacob here has, is again wrestling with him and his hip socket goes out of joint. So how many of you earlier said, when I asked, do you want to be blessed? You thought, yes, I want to be blessed. What if I said, do you want to be blessed, but you have to lose a leg to be blessed? You would kind of say, ooh, I don't know. But I'm being serious here is when, when we think about a blessing, we think of, oh, yes, all the presents that we can think of. But when it comes with the cost, we start reevaluating and say, hmm, well, do I really want to be blessed that much that I have to work with people? Do I really want to be blessed that much that I have to have an uncomfortable situation in my life? Do I really want to be blessed that much that I have to go through something that is going to cost me something? Again, God, we think so many times, God, I want something from you. I, I expect something from you, but God, I don't want you to expect anything from me. God, I want a blessing, but don't ask me to do anything for you. God, I need peace from you, but don't let me go through that situation. God, I want this from you. Again, we want to ask God all these different things, but God, don't ask or require anything from us. And there was a quote, I love this, because again, Pastor Lauren said it this morning, and it just stuck with me, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing it because I'm not might not be down to the word, but he said, many people want life, but are not willing to be the source of life. Many people want love, but they don't want to give love. Many people want many things out of life, but are not willing to give all those things to other people. So again, have you ever been in a relationship with someone and someone may expect something from you, but the minute you ask for something back from them, well, I don't know if this relationship's going to work. Has anyone ever been in a relationship like that? It doesn't even have to be a uh, dating or married, whatever kind of relationship. It can even be a friend, someone who is always asking, asking, asking of you, but the moment you say, you know what, I need you, I don't know if I have time for that. And this is real talk here. Like, things like this happen. And many times, even us in our relationship with God, again, we ask him for things, yet we're not willing to let him ask us for things. But I love that quote that Pastor Lauren said because, again, it reminds us that there is a cost. Jacob wrestled so hard for his blessing. The Lord was even trying to get away. He's like, let go of me. And he throws his hip socket out. And Jacob didn't let go. And that's what I love because, again, so many times when we're going through a situation is as soon as it gets rough, as soon as we feel a little bit uncomfortable, oof, I'm just going to walk away. God, you said that you want to bless me, but I'm in an uncomfortable situation, so I don't really want the blessing that much. And that's where we have to have this energy, like Jacob had, that says, God, I'm going to fight for this no matter what. God, I'm going to fight for my relationship with you. God, I'm going to fight for the plans and the purposes that you have for me. God, I'm going to fight for you because I want that blessing. And when the, go the going gets tough, God, I'm not going to walk away from you. And God... 
Am I even willing to be blessed if it means going through something that's tough? And that's what we have to realize because life is life. So many times we want to blame God for the bad things that we've gone through. Life is life. Bad things may happen sometimes. People are people. People may be mean sometimes. It's not God's fault. But we have to ask ourselves, am I going to stick through this situation? Am I going to stick through and fight for that blessing that God has for us? Are you willing to realize that there's a cost? And are you willing to keep pushing through that situation that you may prevail? In John 20, this is kind of a long scripture, but bear with me. It says, now Thomas called... Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The, uh, the other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Sometimes we think of scars as a bad thing, but they are not. Sometimes scars tell a story. They usually tell a story. You just have to be willing to tell the story. So Timothy wouldn't even believe that Jesus had returned from the grave until he saw the nail scars in Jesus' hand. Just as Jacob had a limp from his hip being thrown out of socket, so will we leave with something from a situation that we have to go through. Things you go through and God, with God, with people, they may be tough and they may leave a scar, but that doesn't mean that the blessing isn't worth it. Because I love to think of this story that Timothy, had he not seen the scars, had he not seen what Jesus went through, he wouldn't believe. But because Jesus was able to show him the scars, Timothy then believed. We have to realize that the things that we go through give us the opportunity to reach other people. And you can use your scars as something to show someone of the awesome things that God has done in your life. And I know that when we're in the process of a scar, the scar could be cool afterward, but how many of you know the process of the scar is not very cool, right? So I had this situation so many years ago, it feels like just yesterday, but it was 2003, that I was so excited. It was the day of my, day after my 17th birthday, and I was starting my first day at Oakland University, and I was so excited, right? First of all, growing up, my parents would never take me to the doctor because I'm like, oh, something's wrong. You're fine. You're fine. That's what I always heard all the time. You're fine. Deal with it, right? Oh, just pray. So I woke up the day after my 17th birthday thinking I'm so awesome and I'm starting OU. And I wake up screaming. Something was going on inside of me. And I rolled off my bed, no joke, crawled. I don't, slithered. I don't even know if you can call it crawling. Screaming to the edge of the balcony. And I just yelled down. I was like, something's wrong with me. So I remember my mom came up and she's like, my dad said, we got to take her to the doctor. And I was like, you know something's wrong with me if my dad says to take her to the doctor. Long story short, very long story short, there was something wrong with me. The doctor said, what does it feel like on a scale of one to 10? I was like, if someone asks me one more time what it feels like on the scale of one to 10, I may actually punch them in the face because I could, a thousand, a million, that's what it feels like on a scale of one to 10. Well, like explain it. I said, it feels like someone jabbed a knife into my stomach and is turning it constantly. Come to find out that I had a cyst that was the size of a grapefruit that wrapped twisting of a knife, right? Wrapped around my ovary and killed my ovary. Crazy, right? 17, yeah, on bed rest for all these months, we were supposed to be performing at the Fox Theater and I couldn't even do it. Oh, this is back to my story why I couldn't be, do my foyotes in the Nutcracker. So <laughs> if you were here for when I was talking about that, right? Cool story, right? 
But I have a scar that shows, a very large scar that shows my story. And now my scar is a cool story many years later because at the time it was not fun. And I'm telling you, that's the most painful thing I've ever been through. The surgery that I had to go through, they said, is the same exact surgery they perform for a C-section. I just didn't get a great present at the end. I lost an ovary and had a cyst this huge taken out of me, right? The process, all, you're probably like, that's disgusting. All this to say that the process is ugly. The process is not fun. And when you're going through the process, you think that it sucks and you don't see light at the end of the tunnel sometimes. But I'm here to tell you that there is a struggle that we go through and at the end it produces a scar. And the scar can tell a great story and you can use that scar to get other people to see the awesome things that God is doing in your life. The awesome things that God has done in your life. God wants to bless you. But sometimes there's a struggle. But we have to be willing to fight through that, not only with God, but the struggle with man as well, to get to the other side. So again, sometimes the process is not fun. Sometimes the process is something that we want to feel like we want to give up. We want to feel like we would rather just back off and say it's not worth fighting. But I promise you that it's worth fighting because God has something awesome. Again, he wants to pour out for you such blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Can I have the musicians come forward? In the last scripture tonight, in 1 John 4.20, it says, If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. If you want to be blessed, there's a struggle with God and there's a struggle with man. And if there's a struggle with man, what does that mean? It says here, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, He's a liar. How can someone love God whom he has not seen and not his brother whom he has seen? He who loves God must love his brother. So my question for you tonight is, do you love God? One person, thank you. One person, actually two, Des and Denzel. Do you love God? Honestly, do you love God? If we love God, we have to love the people who are next to us. Doesn't mean you have to be your, their best friend. But my question for you tonight, is there someone that you have odds against tonight? Is there someone that you have bitterness towards in your heart? Is there someone who's just not sitting right inside your spirit? A parent? It doesn't have to be a boyfriend or a girlfriend. A parent, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, a teacher, whoever it may be. If we love God, we must love people. If we want to work it out with God, we must work it out with people. We cannot love God and not his people. Again, he wants to bless us. He wants to bless us, but we must be willing to work with people. He wants to bless us, but through the struggle, we got to fight that we may prevail. Again, People are not always easy. I'm sure you can agree with me on that. But if we love God, we must work it out. And and again, I just love that picture. I just think of Jacob wrestling with the Lord and just fighting with him and fighting with him. And the Lord is throwing his hip out of socket. Then he's trying to fight him with his hip out of socket. And he says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. That's the kind of people that I want in my life, that when something goes wrong, that they say, you know what, Holly, I'm not letting go because I'm gonna work this out with you. Put the name in the place. Those are the kind of people that I want in my life and those are the kind of people that we need to be that says, I'm gonna fight for you no matter what. I'm gonna fight for this relationship no matter what. I'm gonna fight God with you because I want your plans and purposes to come to pass in my life. No matter the past that I may have lived, no matter the bad choices I may have made years ago, yesterday, God, I'm choosing today to fight for you. God, I'm choosing to fight to love you and to love your people. So if you guys could just stand with me tonight, I want to open the altar call.